For more, we are joined by Lieutenant Colonel Sarit Zahabi. She's the founder and CEO of ALMA, an organization specializing in research and analysis of Israel's security challenges on the northern border. Lieutenant Colonel, thank you so much for being here. So we are definitely going to talk about that northern border. But first, if we could just start with this fact, Israel's defense minister met with IDF troops Thursday and told them they would soon see Gaza from the inside, something we've been talking about this morning. Do you see signs that Israel is really preparing to move ahead with this ground offensive at some point? soon? I can't know that because I can, all I can tell is that we can see the army prepared on both borders and stretched on both borders, the north and the south. And I must say, watching your previous uh, article, that it's really very important before going to any ceasefire or humanitarian aid, that the uh, hostages will be released. These hostages also are part of the humanitarian crisis, just like the Gazians. And one more thing, the, the player here that should be held responsible for all the, uh, the suffering inside Gaza. And I watch your, your photos and images from Gaza and it's truly, uh, make, make me sad. And I truly mm-hmm. identified with all the horrors there. But the player that should be held accountable is Hamas. Hamas is using his own people as human shield after he slaughtered my people. So all of us should unite together to make sure that this will not happen again. This is not September 11. This is the Nazis, and they are, we don't have a choice like Afghanistan or Iraq or Vietnam. We don't have a choice. This is on our other side of the border. This is feet away from our people. Also uh, within the borders of Gaza are, are these hostages, more than 200 people believed held by Hamas. In your opinion, uh, just walk us through how that potentially complicates things in terms of the military options available to the IDF in order to not jeopardize their safety. Or or does that seem like at this point losing some of the hostages may be what happens? Is the IDF prepared for that in order to be able to accomplish their military goals? I believe that our IDF prepared for that. You know, uh, we know of this kind of uh, scenario and this kind of intention by terrorist organization like from a decade ago also from the north so i believe idf understands the situation and the complexity of that having said that you all understand that we cannot live with the monster and that's why idf idf is uh, preparing to fight hamas uh, and to eliminate its military capabilities i believe that if there is specific information of uh, where the hostages are. So this is a a place where we will act in a different way and IDF will find a way to do whatever it can. It doesn't mean that hostages will not get killed. Hamas is doing everything it can to put them at risk. Uh, We are all aware of that. I mentioned that you specialize in analyzing the security of the northern border of Israel, which, of course, has also been a concern as we've seen some military action from Hezbollah. How concerned are you about the war spreading on that front? And what are you seeing right now? I'm extremely concerned. I can tell you of my personal view that I left the north with my little girl and I begged my the rest of the family to come down south. Uh, we, when we try to analyze the attacks that we experienced up north in the past two weeks, so this, we see that in the past week there are more attacks, even though the escalation is not... Uh, you know, uh, at upscale, it's not war, but it's a war zone in a, in a sense that uh, more than 60,000 people that are living next to the border were evacuated and still being evacuated. Uh, it means that uh, there is no normality. Children are not going to school. It means that we hear all the military activity and it means that it's not safe for anybody to be next to the border because every day something happens, whether it's anti-tanks or mortars or rockets or even once UAVs or infiltration of terrorists into the communities. And uh, sincerely, I don't know how we are going to get back to normal unless uh, we will fight Hezbollah, because this is a true threat while these communities are based at defense of the border. That's why I've said it's not Afghanistan, it's not Iraq. Uh, This is here, just on the other side. I live 12 kilometers from the Israeli-Lebanese border, and we had conversation of how, how we protect the shelter, how we block the door, what would we do, how we go out of the window if we hear terrorists outside. I don't want to, to, you know, raise my kids with these kind of conversations anymore. Lieutenant Colonel Sarit Zahabi, thank you very much, both just for a little slice of what life on the ground is like right now, but also your expertise. Thank you for joining us.